The Halo TV show delayed once again and part of a new streaming platform as well as the Coalition, the team that makes Gears of War, helping out with the development of Halo Infinite. We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite and the Halo TV show. And over here, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So let's start off with the hard news first, and then we'll go into the more speculative stuff in the second half of this video. So first off, we're gonna talk about the Halo TV show. So it has been a while since we've heard anything about the Halo TV show, and probably just because, you know, they're just in production right now, and just things are just moving along. From last, we heard that they still needed to finish up the last episode with shoots and do some reshoots as well, mainly because the actress of Cortana and Halsey ended up having to have some scheduling issues with a different project she already signed on to, so that's when they brought in Jen Taylor, the original voice for Cortana, to fill in some parts as well. Now, reshoots are very common within the filming industry when it comes to movies and TV shows, so this really isn't anything out of the ordinary. In fact, even with Halo 5, Gabriel Thorne was originally supposed to take the place of Locke in Halo 5, but due to scheduling conflicts with the actor, they brought in Michael Coulter, who does Locke, to fill in that same kind of role anyways. And what we heard last time as well, that the scheduled release of the TV show was supposed to be in 2021, probably around the fall along to match up with the release of Halo Infinite, which I believe the original idea was to sync that up back in 2020 anyways, but both got delayed multiple times. Well, today Paramount, which owns Showtime, which is going to be the platform that's going to be running the Halo TV show came out with Paramount Plus, which is their streaming platform, which is starting up in March 4th. And within this tweet announcement, they showcased a bunch of different movies and TV shows under the umbrella of Paramount. And in there was the Halo TV show for Showtime. And it says we're here saying so suit up Spartans produced by Showtime. Halo will premiere on Paramount Plus in 2022. Well, that is yet another delay for this Halo TV show. Though I feel this delay is more in case of the whole coronavirus situation within the world. If that never happened, I'm sure this show was going to release in 2021 anyways. Honestly, this is actually kind of nice because the one thing I was really regretting about seeing this TV show come to Showtime was having to be on cable. I don't want to buy cable. I don't own cable. I haven't owned cable in over 10 years. So seeing the show I'm most excited about go to a streaming service means I guess another streaming service I have to pay for, but I could probably just sign up for however long the TV show is going to last and then kind of bounce off and do my own thing and unsubscribe. And I get to watch it on my own time and I'll be able to record footage most likely for the channel as well. So we definitely will be covering this more in the future. And I kind of saw this 2022 release time happening anyways. Again, like the, with the, how much more production is left with the TV show, it would have been a miracle to finish it up by the end of this year. Plus, I think it would be kind of nice because let Halo Infinite get its time to shine in the fall and then hopefully like in the spring, maybe like March, April time frame around there, we get the Halo TV show to get a second surge of Halo hype. So honestly, this might be the best for the the whole situation with that right now within the world so this is a brand new story there's a brand new timeline for the release of halo's tv show i will keep you guys updated as soon as we get more information about this and so this next part we're talking about the collaboration i guess between the studio that makes gears of war the coalition and 343 for Halo Infinite helping to produce that game. Now I did see this news happen a little bit a couple of days ago, but I wasn't quite sure exactly what to make of it. Now we had a response from Xbox as well about this, so now we have a full story, so I wanted to give it to you guys right now. So this Game Informer article obviously goes into it saying that Halo Infinite received help from Gear Studio, The Coalition. So reading this article, it kind of showcased that The Coalition did actually help out a little bit with Halo Infinite's development. Right here stating that the LinkedIn profile of Adam Bodden, if that's how you pronounce his name, Bodden, worked at several major studios on a contract basis, including having Halo Infinite listed under the contract of the Coalition from August 2018 to November 2020. Another posting has Hugo Gutierrez Mares listed as a visual effects artist working on the latest Halo from June 2017 until December 2020. Here's a screenshot of his LinkedIn profile. You see the Coalition Studio listing Gears of 5, Gears of 5 DLC, as well as Halo Infinite on there. Now this environmental artist 
did actually switch over recently in December to work at EA Studios, which apparently he worked at previously as well. So it seems like he might have just kind of hopped in to help out a little bit with Halo Infinite's development. But is this a sign that 343 has not enough help to make Halo Infinite work? Well, maybe not so much, but Microsoft does reply back to here saying with the update from the Microsoft spokesman telling Game Informer that as we've done in the past, the coalition chipped in to help out with development on Halo Infinite on a temporary basis. It is fairly common for members of the various Xbox game studios to lend their expertise to games other teams are working on, much like how members of 343 have contributed to other Xbox game studios products throughout the years. This ability to share talent is one of the greatest strengths of Xbox game studios and we're grateful for all of the individuals who have pitched in to help make Halo Infinite the best game it can be. Now you're also probably thinking well this guy's like a spokesman for Xbox, this is PR talk, Halo Infinite's in the gutter right now. Well, not necessarily. This is actually is very common within the gaming industry as a whole to have other studios within the same umbrella of a producer of some sorts to help out with other games. I mean, even Assassin's Creed Valhalla had a grand total of 15 development teams work on that game. Though, when you go onto the Wikipedia page of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you see Ubisoft Montreal listed as the developer, but there were 15 total development teams that worked to put this game together. And it's all, most of it was actually under the umbrella of Ubisoft as well. Draw some similarities there with Ubisoft and Microsoft and helping out with the development of a single game, utilizing multiple studios. They also mentioned about Ubisoft San Francisco as another main studio that helped make Valhalla what it is so this is actually kind of rather common practice. It even happens with Halo. Even right now with the MCC, there are external teams doing the heavy lifting to help make Halo MCC what it is right now, where 343 is kind of driving the ship, but hiring external companies to help do the heavy lifting, where the, because right now 343 is a bit stretched for resources because of the production of Halo Infinite. And this isn't the first time we've had like a Gears crossover with Halo. If you guys remember with Gears of War 5, you can play as Kat and Emil, within that game, which I certainly did plenty of times when that game came out. I've even done this in my own personal life as well, at my own job where I'm working in an office and say like another team needs some help temporarily for like an extended period of time. I've gone in there and helped out other teams to help them out with whatever you know situation they need. Like it's, it's, it's a very common process and I won't think it's anything to really kind of think terribly of, but it certainly showcases that Microsoft is willing to do whatever it takes to make sure Halo Infinite comes out the way it's supposed to. But what are your thoughts on the Halo TV show being delayed until 2022, hopefully spring 2022, and the thoughts of Coalition members working on Halo Infinite as well? Let me know in the comment section down below. Be on the loop for the last few days or so. Check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.